Welcome to a second video on trig integrals involving powers of sine and cosine. Let's go ahead and do a quick review before we jump to our next examples. First, if the power of sine is odd, we'll save one factor of sine and convert the remaining factors to cosines. If the power of cosine is odd, we'll save one factor of cosine and convert the remaining factors to sines. And number three, if both powers of sine and cosine are even and non-negative, we'll make repeated use of these half angle identities. And if both sine and cosine are odd, you could actually use either one or number two. Let's go and take a look at this example here. Since the power on cosine is odd, we'll rewrite this pulling out one factor of cosine. So we'll have cosine to the fourth two x times cosine two x dx. We can use the fact that cosine squared x equals one minus sine squared x to do a substitution here for a cosine to the fourth two x. Since cosine to the fourth two x is equal to cosine squared two x raised to the second power, we would have one minus sine squared two x raised to the second power times cosine two x dx. Now that everything is in terms of sine except for this extra factor of cosine, we're going to let u equal sine two x. So differential u will equal cosine two x times two times dx. Since our integrand only contains cosine two x dx, let's go ahead and solve this for cosine two x dx by dividing both sides by two. So we have one half du equals cosine two x dx. Let's go ahead and rewrite this in terms of u. Again, cosine two x dx is equal to one half du. And sine two x is equal to u, so we'd have one minus u squared raised to the second power. Let's go ahead and multiply this out and then we can integrate with respect to u. So we'd have one minus two u squared plus u to the fourth Now let's go ahead and integrate this with respect to u. So we'd have u minus two u to the third over three plus u to the fifth over five plus c. Now we'll go ahead and replace u with sine two x on the next screen. So performing the substitution for u, we'll have one half times sine two x plus this would be two thirds sine to the third two x plus this would be one fifth sine to the fifth two x. And then of course our plus c. Let's go ahead and finish by distributing the one half. The one half times two thirds that would be one third and one half times one fifth would be one tenth. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. Now here we have a definite integral, but the idea is going to be the same. Since the power on sine is odd, we'll save one factor of sine and convert the rest to cosines. So here's the extra factor of sine x. Now we'll replace sine squared x with one minus cosine squared x. Now that everything's in terms of cosine, except for this extra factor of sine x, we'll let u equal cosine x. So differential u is equal to negative sine x dx. So that means negative du is equal to sine x dx. Let's go ahead and rewrite this in terms of u. I'll leave off the limits of integration since these are in terms of x. So I'll have one minus u squared over u to the one half and then sine x dx is equal to negative du. So we'll put the negative here and the du here. Let's go ahead and start simplifying this. We'll have one over u to the one half minus u squared over u to the one half. 
And let's go one more step here. This would be u to the negative one half. And here we have minus two minus one half would be three halves. Let's go ahead and finish this on the next screen. Okay, so here's what we had in the previous screen. We know u is equal to cosine x, and our interval is from pi over six to pi over two. Let's go ahead and integrate this with respect to u. So we'll add one, that'd be u to the one half, divided by one half, minus u to the five halves, divided by five halves. Let's go ahead and rewrite this now in terms of cosine x so we can evaluate it at the upper and lower limits of integration. Well, dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by two, so we'll have negative two cosine x to the one half. And here we have a negative and then a minus, so we'll have plus, this would be two fifths cosine x to the five halves. Remember this was a definite integral, so we need to evaluate this at pi over two and then subtract the value of this at pi over six. So let's first replace x with pi over two. So I have negative two times the cosine of pi over two to the one half plus two fifths cosine pi over two to the five halves. And then we'll subtract the value of this when x is pi over six. Well, the cosine of pi over two is zero. This is gonna be zero plus zero minus, here we have the cosine of pi over six. That should remind you of a reference angle. Remember a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. We have one, two, square root three. This angle here is pi over six, so the cosine pi over six would be square root three over two. So we have negative two times the square root of three over two to the one half plus two-fifths times the square root of three over two to the five-halves power. Let's go ahead and rewrite this one more time. We're gonna have positive two times the square root of three over two to the one-half power, and then minus two-fifths square root of three over two to the five-halves power. We'll go ahead and leave it like this for the exact answer, but the decimal approximation would be approximately 1.582. Okay, I hope you found these additional examples helpful. Thank you for watching.